There's no way to put it other than to say that Eminem is one of the most successful artists in music history. His album sales, billboard hits, and accolades speak for themselves. You know, obviously Eminem is the biggest rapper of all time, statistically. But this video isn't about the numbers. It's about the magic that goes into creating them. This video is about the studio. Marshall Mathers is one of the most technical rappers to ever touch the mic. His rhyme structure and flow are hard to match, and say what you want about M, but his bars have been top tier for almost three decades. If the eyes fest with Nas, bumping dots, effects, and erect up dots, and then drop two extra strength watts and bike it in out my pocket, they cost less. I'm a hot mess because I tripped and got my head stuck in a wasp nest in the process. Awesome. There are few people who take their craft as seriously as M does. If 10,000 hours is the mark for mastery, this man could teach a master class on rhyming. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what it's really like to work with Eminem in the studio, from his writing process to how he collaborates, straight from the mouths of artists like Kendrick Lamar, Jay-Z, Nicki Minaj, 50 Cent, and more. The first thing to know about Eminem's process is that he treats rap like a job. Writing rhymes, it's like a nine to five to him. No, literally. M will clock in at 9 a.m. and leave at 5 p.m. like he's working your average day job. Just listen to Akon talk about working with Eminem on their 2000s classic, Smack That. Working with him made me look at the business different because he was the first artist that I worked with that actually treated uh, the business like a real job. Like, he comes in at 9 a.m. every day to the studio, takes his lunch break at 1 and it's out of there by 5 p.m. Like, it's like a schedule. And I didn't expect that from him. Because when I, the, the first day I came, I came around six. I'm expecting, okay, I'm gonna do an evening session. I get this studio, oh, M just left. I was like, yo, M, where you at? He said, I'm, I'm out of here. I said, well, I'm at the studio, I just got here. You coming back? He said, I'll be back there at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll yeah, I'm clocked so, out. I'm done. Yeah, like literally, I'm clocked out. Like I'm, so, I'm I feel like you joking, right? He said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm serious. I see you at nine. You gonna get up early? I see you. I, I gotta be there. So I get there at nine, and he shows up on time. Play some beats. We robbing. We rocking. So I'm in the middle of writing the record. He's like, yo, I'm about to go out for lunch. I said, all right, cool. I'm gonna meet you after. So you're not gonna take no lunch? I said, no, no, I'm not hungry. I'm just gonna work. He said, all right, cool. He goes, takes lunch. Hour come back. He's back. What we got? Play him the record, play him the chorus. He's like, oh, this is it. Boom. He goes into his verse. Five o'clock come. He's halfway in. He's like, all right, bro, I'm going to see you tomorrow. <laughs> so at I'm this glad. point, I'm like, yo, but your verse almost done. You ain't going to finish it? No, no, I'll finish it tomorrow. <laughs> and it seems like he doesn't do much else besides rap. Here's 50 joking about how dedicated M is to his work. M is a lab rat. I don't know if you know this, but you don't see him unless he's scheduled to be somewhere. Other than that, he's probably writing something new now. But while he's in the studio, he does a lot more than just work on his bars. M is involved in every part of the process of music making. Just Blaze even recalls M tweaking his own vocals. M is there when you're making the beat sometimes. He's there when you're mixing. He's there tweaking and mixing his own vocals. He hears, he has like dog hearing, so he'll be like, turn this up a half a dB, turn the bass up like a quarter dB at this frequency. Like he's very much of a scientist with it. Where Jay is just more so like, that oh, sounds good, I right, cool now. He cares about every aspect of the song, from an internal rhyme pattern to a sound effect. When I spoke to Scott Storch, he told the story of M spending so much time creating sound effects that Dr. Dre had to tell him to stop. I remember a time where he was going crazy with the sound effects and just going super obsessive and he just could not let go of this album and turn it in. And Trey was like, all right, enough of the sound effects. Like, you got enough of the shit done. Although writing may not be the only thing Eminem is concerned with in the studio, it's definitely the spark for all of the rest of his inspiration. My mind, 24 seven, aside from family stuff, obviously is, is, is uh, constantly thinking of ways to bend words or you know i may like if i don't got paper i'll write it on my hand or whatever mm -hmm. sometimes when i fill up the hand then i'll transfer it to paper it seems like all eminem thinks about is rhyming words together and writing it all down helps him clear his thoughts i consider myself day to day an average person like you know pretty normal you know my thoughts when i write thoughts up in my head things that i think of I think everybody else thinks a lot of this shit I think of too, they just don't say it. And my thing is I just say it. What I love about rap is that it feels like it's puzzles 
to mm. me. Like words are like puzzles and trying to figure out a puzzle and trying to figure out what word could go here and how many words can I make. Like if I can take a rhyme, like I'm real into the craft, like just the, the you know, MCing and, and, and I feel like, like I always think like, how can I take a, how can I figure this puzzle out? Like how can I take uh, words and, and, and put them at the end of the sentence, but in between maybe make some words rhyme in between that, that rhyme and like sandwich them, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, so sandwich those words and try to make them, make them rhyme inside of the phrase and then come back outside and try to, you know, try to rhyme with the word that I ended on the snare. Rihanna talked about working with M on Love The Way You Lie Part 2, and she describes the amount of ideas that Marshall has on a daily basis. He has so much in his mind yeah. that I almost feel lucky for him that he has music. Mm -hmm. I feel like he has so much in his head that music is such a great release for him. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorite artists. It's almost like if he didn't write things down, he'll lose out on classic bars. Like, I'm not good at keeping thoughts. I get scatterbrained sometimes, and I might try to remember, like, what was I thinking of earlier? And I won't remember it, so I gotta write it down. So I write my rhymes on anything. A lot of rappers like Hove and Wayne gave up on using a pen and pad early in their careers. But here's why Eminem says the notebook is still such a crucial part of his process. Something about, for me, I can keep ideas on my phone too, but something about the pen and paper to me is better just because I can look at all my ideas and I can see them at once. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like, oh man, what was that thing I said that one day? Shit. And scroll, oh fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're sitting there for two hours, oh, what was that? Wait, I remember the phrase, but what I used to rhyme with it? For me, I remember which side of the page it's on. Not only does he memorize his own lyrics, but when I spoke to Yellow Wolf, he said that M rapped him back lyrics from one of his songs, word for word. And then when I heard him uh, recite that, I was just floored, man that someone of that caliber would take the time to memorize, or, or you know what? Knowing him, he probably just listened to it once. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like M takes inspiration from all over the place. 2 Chains talked about his experience working with Marshall and apparently this one thing was giving him anxiety. So M telling me like he listens to Kendrick and he listens to me, telling me like, like you know, like, he's like, he telling me like the Kendrick, what he likes about Kendrick and he's telling me like, basically like a lot of my metaphors give him anxiety. Like he be like, he never know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I don't never know, man, you give me fucking anxiety with this. I'm like, and I'm like, man, it's really an honor but you saying this, you know right. what I'm saying? Because you know, we know where right. you are as far as yeah. the food chain. You're right. He's very hypercritical of detail and hears the music in a very deep way and hears internal rhythms in track and writes his writes words to to work on so many different levels rhythmically within what's going on musically to where if we change a little thing in the track to better the track it might not work in his mind how it relates to what he's saying and how he's phrasing he's phrasing so glued to the music and written that way like just sees it as not just riding the flow it's much more commercial stuff the thing about eminem is that he's never afraid to show his respect publicly to those he admires until I collapse, M had the classic bars about his standing within the game as he showed love to some of the greatest. And when I spoke to Jadakiss about his mention on the song, he seemed grateful to be put amongst the pack of goats by someone of Eminem's stature. Until I collapse, he, he listed you in that list of like Reggie, Jay-Z, Tupac, and Biggie, Andre from Outkast, Jada, Corrupt, Nas, and then me like, when you heard, when you hear a song like that, do you remember where you were when you heard that bar? I was somewhere in the galaxy, but you know, it's a beautiful thing like when, when your colleagues and and dudes like M mention you in songs like that on that kind of level, you, you appreciate, you know? And that's what you do it for. But even though he is held in such high regard when it comes to his rhyming, M actually isn't afraid to take criticism either. Here's the game talking about Eminem asking for his feedback on a verse for their collab off the documentary. I want to just quickly go back to your conversation with M about those verses. What was the back and forth about? It wasn't back and forth. Eminem was just, uh, he, was, he was more concerned about it being my record. He wanted it to be structured the way I wanted it. And he wanted to make sure that, yo, Eminem asked me what I thought about his verse. That was crazy. What'd you say? I mean, I said it, what the fuck I was supposed to say. Even if it was, <laughs> even if it was fucking whack, I was gonna say like, yeah, it's fucking classic. But it's M, and it's like, why are you asking me how I feel about the verse? But even listen to the way Game worded that. 
He said, of course he was going to tell Eminem that his verse was fire. Imagine the pressure of being honest with Eminem, even if you did think his bars were ever not on point. Just Blaze recalled a story where he did just that, and here's what Marshall's reaction was. A lot of times I can just, I can say to certain people, yo, just do that verse over, or you're a little offbeat, you know, or, you know, your second verse is kind of weak, and they don't think anything of it because we had that rapport. So when my, my first day or my second day of working with M on recovery, we're doing this one song, and I just kind of said to him, like, yo, your second verse, you kind of went off course a little bit, subject matter wise, and your third verse, your flow's a little off. I just left it at that, I didn't think anything of it. And he just, he was facing away from me. He was, you know, he's facing, I'm, I'm talking to him from behind. He just turns around and he's like, I don't hear that dog. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I fucked the money up. <laughs> I, I knew it was over. After that, I knew it was over. And, um, um, I'm, and then I tried to like, you know, salvage it. And I'm like, well, no, what I mean is, you know, in your second verse, you're not really talking about X, Y, and Z. And in your third verse, if you notice, the flow kind of diverts in a weird way. I was trying to clean it up, but it was, it was a wrap. So about three hours later, I'm sitting in his lounge, um, waiting to probably be, be sent home. And um, his, um, his right hand, one of his right hand people comes and hands me a phone. They're like, here. I'm like, who's it? They're like, it's Marshall. So I'm like, it was up. He's like, yo, you're a fucking alien. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, how did you hear that shit? And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? And you know, he's basically like, I listen, he's like, after you said what you said, I went home and listened to the song 30 times to try to understand what you were saying. And I eventually heard it and I realized where, you know, that I agree with you. Um, so he's like, yo, thank you for that because nobody has ever really coached me. From the, from the second Dre found me, I was vocal producing everybody. So nobody's really ever gave me negative feedback. So I appreciate it. It's not just M feeling the pressure to perform. In fact, other rappers have said that being in the studio with Eminem makes them bring out their A game when it comes to the bars. Here's Tech 9 talking about how Marshall brings out the competitive spirit in MCs within the studio. I think he makes everybody want to come with their A game because mm -hmm. he's an elite MC. We are also, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the um, qualifications you have to have for strange music. You know yeah. what I mean? I love extreme lyricists. And to me, he's the extreme lyricist when it comes to wordplay and all that, you know, the emotion and everything. And there's this classic story about how Eminem tested Kendrick Lamar's writing ability in the studio when they first met just to prove that he didn't have a ghostwriter. He'd heard that Kendrick Lamar was the best rapper and he invited him to the studio to get, get him on a song and he arrived and Kendrick came with all his mates. And uh, Eminem said, um, I just want you in the studio, just you on your own and then my engineer is going to come in and then record you doing it, but your mates aren't allowed in. And then Kendrick did it, wrote a sick verse, and then all, everyone came in to listen to it. And Eminem said he did it to test Kendrick because he thought he had a ghostwriter, and he then realized that he didn't, and then claimed that he was the best. Plus, Eminem isn't afraid to give his honest feedback either. Here's Nicki Minaj talking about how M replied to a song that he just didn't think was a good fit for him. I didn't think it was going to happen. I mean... I, I got, I remember we kept talking about it and I kept thinking, I really was saying in my head, I know it's not gonna happen, but you know, it doesn't hurt. So I sent him one record and he didn't love it. And um. Did that hurt your feelings to have him in your face? No, okay. no, because he didn't say, you know, artists talk to artists differently. He didn't say I didn't love it, but he just said, um, could you send me something that's a little bit more me? So I understood that because I'm, I'm an artist and I've had to say the same thing to people. So I, so I remember I sent an email back and I said, you know, I, I want to thank him just for saying that, just for having enough respect. Because some people, like you'll send them and you'll, 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 be in, you'll ask them, you know, if they would work with you and sometimes they won't even respond or say anything. But like with M, he had the respect at least to treat me like a peer and say, you know what, it's, I think it's dope, but I don't think it's me. And I could, I, I just was like, I respect that so much. But it's not just all seriousness in the studio with Eminem. Everyone who knows him describes him as someone who's always joking around. And this is what I'm destined to be. And you don't understand it. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than everybody. It's the band, dude. V. I don't have the rage anymore that I used to have, but I still have the exact same passion. Sometimes it doesn't always come out the right way. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just like, oh, what the fuck is that? And then <laughs> we'll take a pause, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
who are you like i don't know who i'm competing with but i just want to be there's a lot of great rappers there's a lot of great artists there's a lot of great rappers coming up in this generation now that it's like i'm watching it and i'm loving it and just the competitive spirit in me wants to keep up with the best of the best Nicki minaj even said that working with eminem on roman's revenge was the most fun she ever had recording a song it gave me life darling so you Absolutely. collaborated with him the no, no. I collaborated with Slim Shady. One of the few criticisms about Eminem's music over the past few years has been that he doesn't have anything to talk about anymore and is only just showing off how well he can rhyme. But in my rapper brain, I'm a content nigga. You gotta say something. You have not said anything for the better part of a whole fucking decade. But this clip of M talking about the difference between rapping and rhyming could put that into context. One of the things that's, that's happened to me over the years is <sighs> rapping gets harder, but rhyming gets easier, if that makes any sense. Rhyming gets easier because when I think of a couple phrases or whatever it is, I think of so much shit that rhymes with it, you know, and connecting the syllables and all, do, doing all that, like, but by the time it's all said and done, is this different than anything I've done? But when I say rapping gets harder, is because the further along you get in your career, there's less places to go that you haven't been. Overall, Eminem has left his mark on music whether or not he ever wants to drop another album. Although with his love for the craft, I don't know that there will ever be a day where Shady doesn't return. His influence runs deep though. In fact, some of the biggest stars of today, like Kendrick, Cole, and Big Sean have all stated that Shady was a big influence on their career. Eminem is, you know, one of the greatest of all time. And nobody can take that from him. Mm -hmm. I can't take it. Uh, new artists can't take it. No nothing. That boy wordplay is, is, is out of his world. Excluding the fact of whatever racial color of hip hop is hip hop. And he got it. From his first three albums, I was like all the way in. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm still all the way in because he's still amazing. But, you know, th that was a point in my life, a very pivotal point in my rap career. My yeah. rap, uh, my first song I ever made was literally just biting Eminem and Nas. And his rhyming ability continues to amaze fans more than 20 years after he started out in the game. We may never see somebody come into the game and shake things up like Marshall Mathers did, but as hip hop fans, we can only be thankful that we witnessed it. For Hip Hop DX, I'm Jeremy Hecht, and this has been another DX Deep Dive in the studio. Let us know who we should cover next and hit the comments to tell us what is the one studio session of M's that you would have loved to have been there for. Hit the subscribe button for more videos like this, daily news, shorts, and artist interviews. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. I'll leave you with this classic interview of Eminem talking about the art of rhyming. I've heard you say that you, you bend the word. Yeah, it's just in the enunciation of it. Like people say that uh, the word orange doesn't rhyme with anything. And that kind of pisses me off because I can think of a lot of things that rhyme with orange. What rhymes with orange? If you're looking, to, if you're taking, if you're taking the word at face value, and you just say orange, nothing is gonna rhyme with it exactly. If you enunciate it and you make it like more than one syllable, mm -hmm. orange, you could say like, uh, I put my orange four inch door hinge in storage and ate porridge with George. <laughs> you just have to figure out the, the science to breaking down words and try to. And do you think about this throughout the day? I mean, you're driving <coughs> along, you think about rhyming words? Yeah, all day.